Hello and welcome to Saki Tech. So in today's video, we are going to talk about the ping command for network troubleshooting. So if you're having network connection problems, you can use the ping command to send a signal to another device you're trying to reach and see if you get a response. So for those of you who are interested in how this works, the ping command is a subset of the ICMP, which is known as the Internet Control Message Protocol, and it uses what is called an echo request. So when you ping any device, you send out an echo request. And if the device you pinged is active or online, you get an echo response. And that is how you know the device you're trying to reach is working. If the device you're trying to reach is not working or if it is offline, then you're not going to get an echo response. And that is when you can decide whether there's a problem on your network or not. All right, so let's quickly use the IP config command. And I do have a video for this command and I explain what it does. IP config basically gives you information about your local network. So if I type in and press enter, I'm going to get my local IP address for this computer and I'm going to get the default gateway IP address. The default gateway is your router. So let's clear the screen now that I know the addresses and let's go ahead and ping the router. Okay, so ping 192.168.1.1. So what is going to happen here is we are going to send an echo request to the router and the router is, if it is working, respond with an echo request. So let's press enter. And let us analyze these results. So what happened was we pinged the router with 32 bytes of data. So what we sent was we sent a tiny little packet of data that was in 32 bytes of size. And then I got a reply from the router four times. So this is one, two, three, four. The ping command by default sends out four 32 bytes of data. Okay. And then if you look here, it says the time it took to get a response from the router was less than one milliseconds. We sent 32 bytes and the time to live is not that important right now. So we can skip that. And then you also get statistics down here. So it says packets sent four, packets received four, and packets lost was zero. So when you see that the packets lost were zero, that is a good sign. That means of all the packets we sent, we got a response right back. Alrighty? So that means our connection is rock solid. So how does this work as far as network troubleshooting goes? What happens is, as you know, without your router, you cannot go to the internet. Okay, so if you're unable to go to the internet, your first step should be to ping your router. If the router is working, then you can tell yourself that the router is not the problem. If the router is not working, then you can determine that it is the router that is the problem. Now let's go ahead and ping something beyond your router. Let's ping yahoo.com. So let's type in ping and then you can go www.yahoo.com dot com and you can press enter and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna analyze the results one more time so if you it says pinging this is the host name here's the IP address of Yahoo right here and we pinged Yahoo with 32 bytes of data so we pinged it four times and every single time we got a response back from yahoo.com and remember the response back is the same 32 bytes of data that we sent out we get it right back but if you look at the um, at each packet here so let's look at the first packet the time it took for us to get a response from Yahoo was 33 milliseconds now if you look at my local uh, router it was only one milliseconds now the router is sitting right next to me but Yahoo is probably all the way in another state so that is why it takes more time to send a packet and receive a response from yahoo.com so again we sent four packets and we got four responses and if you look down here it says ping statistics for 98.139.183.24 which is the IP address of Yahoo we sent four packets we received four packets we lost zero packets so what does that mean that means the connection is in fact rock-solid 
okay and if you look down here the minimum time to get a response from Yahoo was 27 milliseconds which is the fourth packet right here the maximum time to receive a response from Yahoo was 33 milliseconds which is the packet over here and the average is 29 milliseconds which is the addition of all these divided by 4 now so the ping command is all about analyzing the packets you send out a packet you run the ping command you send out some packets and you analyze the results for example if I had sent four packets and I received only one packet back my lost packet numbers would be three so that would mean that there's a connection problem somewhere in the line from me to yahoo.com but this is that is the first step in diagnosing a problem now as another example let's ping something that doesn't exist and see what happens so let's do ping 192.168.1.5000 okay so I know for a fact that that IP address does not exist on my local area network so if I press enter it says ping request could not find host 192.168.1.5000 please check the name and try again so let's say that 192.168.1.5000 was a server on my local area network I tried to ping it and I did not get a response so what does that mean that means it's not working so I have to go to my server and I would have to configure it to make sure it is working I would check the cables I would make sure the server is turned on and that is configured properly okay all right so let me just uh, type in CLS which clears the screen and I'm gonna show you other things you can do with the ping so the ping command is a little more advanced than what you just saw the, the what you just saw were the basics you can manipulate the ping command to increase the size of the packet you're sending or maybe increase how many times you want to ping a particular device so let me show you how that is done and how you do that is by using parameters right after the ping command so I'm gonna go over two very important parameters number one is going to be ping and then what you do is you type in minus n okay and then you put in any number don't put a big number put like something like um, let's say eight and then let's ping Yahoo eight times so this is what this parameter does you can change the number of times you want to send a data packet to yahoo.com so www.yahoo.com and watch what happens now okay so instead of sending Yahoo four packets that we usually do by using the ping command all by itself we were able to send Yahoo eight packets okay so this is one two three four five six seven eight and if you look at the bottom here packets sent eight received eight lost zero so that means again the connection is rock solid we did not lose any packets out of eight packets alrighty let's do one more let's do ping minus and let's do 10 packets let's start do with Google this time google.com so we are going to use we're gonna say ping we're gonna put this parameter minus n after the parameter you put in how many packets you want to send and then you type type in the destination IP address or the destination address okay so press enter three four five six seven eight nine ten again we sent out 10 packets if you look at the bottom here so remember ping statistics for 74.125.131.99 that is the IP address of the Google server so we sent 10 packets we received back 10 packets so we received 10 echo responses from Google and we lost zero packets again that means the connection uh, based on these statistics here is rock solid okay so that was the first parameter I want to go over it's a nice way to extend how many packets you can send which gives you greater control over trying to diagnose a problem so if you send four packets that is not a big deal anybody can send and receive four packets 
But what if you send a hundred packets to Google? You're bound to lose a packet or two, which will kind of tell you if your connection is in fact solid or there is some uh, problems here and there. Anyway, let's go to the next parameter. So let's type in ping, and this time I'm going to use minus L. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to designate the size of the packet. So if you look up here, the packets by default are 32 bytes. So that's the first ping, and even the ping on the, on the top for uh, Yahoo, 32 bytes. So by default, our packets are sized 32 bytes. If I do the minus L, minus L, and I can type in 100. So I can say that I want to send a packet in the size of 100 bytes instead of 32 bytes or even a thousand. Okay, let's do 100 and let's send this down to google.com. And remember, by default, it's going to send four packets. Okay, we're not using the minus N parameter. We're using the minus L parameter, which allows me to designate the size. So if you look over here, it says pinging www.google.com, Google's IP address with 100 bytes of data. So I increase the size of the data. And then again, I sent four packets. I received four packets. I lost zero packets. So even with 100 bytes, the connection is pretty good. Okay, I'm not losing any packets. Okay, so there's one very important point I want to make before I move on. Um, it pays off to analyze each line of data okay so here I ping Google with a hundred bytes of packets right I sent a hundred bytes but if you look over here I got a reply from Google and this is Google's IP address 74.125.131.99 with a response of 64 bytes of data so I sent a hundred bytes but Google responded with a 64 byte packet why? Because I could have sent Google one gigabytes, but Google cannot respond with a whole gig every single time. If they do that, their network connection will choke. So Google probably have configured their servers to only respond with a maximum of 64 bytes to ping requests. Okay, so I cannot send a ping request of one gigabytes to Google. Like I said, if I do that, their connections could choke. This could even be a form of an attack. I can sit here and I can tell a hundred other people to keep pinging Google all day with one gigabytes and that is going to choke Google's servers. Their connection speed is going to go down and people that are trying to access Google are going to have problems. So even if I send a hundred bytes of data, Google only responds with a maximum of 64 bytes. And 64 bytes is nothing. Alrighty, and the final thing I'm gonna go over with the ping command is how you can combine parameters. So I can ping, let's say I'm gonna ping Google again, I'm gonna ping Google six times, and I'm also going to send 64 bytes of data every single time. Actually, you know what, let's make that 50 bytes. So I can actually combine parameters and use them together, dot com. So that's ping minus n means ping x many times so I'm gonna ping it six times and then minus L means designate the size of the data packet you're sending over and that's going to be 50 bytes and I'm gonna ping www.google.com press enter let's wait for this to complete okay so we ping Google with 50 bytes of data we pinged it six times one two three four five six and Google responded with 50 bytes of data and they responded pretty quickly 28 milliseconds the first time 27 the next time and the times varies a little bit okay but if you look at the bottom here packet sent six received six lost zero again that means the connection is really really good but as you can see the point of this ping command was that you can combine the parameters you can combine minus n with minus L to do th two things at once we were able to increase the size of packets we sent, the number of times we sent it over. All right, so let me clear the screen, CLS, and then I'm gonna show you one more thing. If you type in ping slash help, 
you will get a list of all the parameters that you can use and combine with each other over here okay I cannot show you all of them because some of them don't work but uh, you can take a look at them if you're interested but the minus N and minus L I think are the most important alright so that's it about the ping command so basically the ping command sends out an echo request and it gets an echo response if the device you're trying to reach is working and this is how you troubleshoot your network you have to make sure your router is working so you can go online you have to make sure a server on your local network is working to make sure you can interact with it to analyze if it is working or not you can ping those devices you can also check the integrity of your connection by analyzing the lost packets alrighty and you can uh, look down below in the description to see the full playlist of network troubleshooting commands using the command prompt so you will see other commands such as IP config NS lookup and trace RT which are all very very important alright so that brings us to the end of this video uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more videos to come uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked this video and also you can go ahead and connect with me socially on Google Plus Facebook and Twitter for which all the links are in the description below. Thank you again and I'll see you the next time. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just throw them down in the comments section below.